Hello everybody, welcome back to the MadVidPro AI YouTube channel. So it looks like OpenAI is kicking off 2024 with a bang. This is an impressive update to ChatGPT that they are calling Memory. And honestly, this is a lot more than meets the eye. So here we are on the official OpenAI blog. Memory and new controls for ChatGPT. We're testing the ability for ChatGPT to remember things you discuss and make future chats more helpful you're in control of chat gpt's memory that's a, a big one right there because this can be a little bit scary right off the bat what is this thing going to remember how is it going to remember it and do i even want it to remember things now before we dive in further guys a quick message from our sponsor as savvy internet users, you guys all no doubt know that cybersecurity is a pretty big issue. However, the vast majority of us just don't do anything to solve for it. And especially if you're like me and you want to try out a bunch of new AI technology, so you're always hopping from site to site, while well, cybersecurity becomes even more of a concern. That's why I'm happy to say that NordVPN, yes, the best VPN in the business, is sponsoring today's video. This channel would not be possible without its sponsors, so I'm really happy that we get to have awesome ones like NordVPN. I'm sure Nord NordVPN needs no introduction, but it's the best of the best. Accessible on pretty much any device imaginable, can be enabled with one click, and I'm also really happy to say that NordVPN is allowing me to give you guys a bonus gift. With the link down in the description below, you get an extra four months on top of the plan, and let's just say that this deal is pretty exclusive. Now, the way that I personally like to use NordVPN, and I think a lot of you guys will too, is just the ability to access 5,300 servers in 60 different countries, meaning those AI technologies that you really want to access but just aren't available in your country immediately become unlocked for you. Not to mention, as I stated earlier, cybersecurity is a huge focus for NordVPN. They have their automatic kill switch feature, automatic threat protection, to make sure that while you explore the latest technologies, you're safe and secure. What's really great is that if you don't end up liking NordVPN, it is entirely risk-free. Let's say you click the link in the description and you try it out and you just don't like it. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee. I've said it time and time again, if you're trying to access some AI that is just not available in your country, NordVPN is the best spot for this while also staying more secure than you otherwise would be. So if this is something that interests you, definitely check out the link in the description below. Trust me, you're not going to find a better deal on NordVPN anywhere else. Now back to our regularly scheduled content. This is the first image they provide to us for this, and clearly there's a pretty nice memory management system built right into ChatGPT, where I guess you can change the different agents that can remember things, so maybe each GPT will have its own memory. You know, user has a two-year-old daughter, for example. The daughter loves jellyfish, prefers meeting summaries to have headlines with bullets and action items summarized at the end, loves to travel, interested in traveling to Mexico for April vacation. See, this one, you know, well, that scares me a little bit it knows what I want to do in the in the future months like that's that's a little creepy right a little bit creepy but clearly you can just delete it that's nice to see at least there's a delete button but imagine something like this being hacked someone could learn a lot about you but that gets me thinking is this um you know stuff that Google doesn't already kind of know to a degree but I really am excited for ChatGPT to remember my preferences in terms of its responses but I love this focus on on developing chat GPT in order to better prompt itself in the future to know what I am looking for in a response for example preferring assistance in writing blog posts to be more concise straightforward and less emotive. Another concern of mine, though, is let's say we develop a bunch of these little memory units over time, and it turns out that I want it to change the way it responds. Do I have to go all the way in here and dig around and look for the, the one that's causing the issue and then delete it, or can I ask it to delete it for me? Because that would be pretty nice. Do they automatically update over time? Lots of questions that need to be answered, so let's read further. So first up here, it's pretty important to note that they are just testing memory with ChatGPT right now. It's only rolling out to a small portion of ChatGPT free and plus users this week, and broader rollout is, is something that they're going to share later. Anyways, you can explicitly tell ChatGPT to remember something, which is definitely something that I think I would use a lot. I'd be like, can you just remember this from now on? Like, remember this about me. I hate blah blah blah. I like blah blah blah. You can also ask it what it specifically remembers, which is nice. We'll have to see how well that actually works in practice. If there's an issue, for example, where it's not performing the way I expect it to, is it going to be able to pull out the specific memory slot that it 
nose is bugging me. You can also just tell it to wipe its own memory, which is pretty funny. And of course, you can turn off the feature entirely. So besides just asking it to remember specific things, it will just pick up details all by itself, which is a little creepy, but I think it's pretty cool. Like, I'd love to see what it just kind of learns about me over time. Like, what if we have this really deep conversation and it just learns like these really crazy intrinsic details that I never even might have known about myself? What if it learns so much about me that it can just replicate me like a clone. I think that'd be pretty creepy and cool as well. <laughs> So yeah, the memory will get better the more you use it, and you'll start to notice the improvements over time. They give us some examples. We already know this one about the meeting notes. You've told ChatGPT you own a neighborhood coffee shop when brainstorming messages for a social post. It knows where to start. Okay, I can see that's definitely useful. Absolutely useful for my YouTube channel. Actually, this is a really good thing to bring up. One really annoying thing that I've noticed about uh, interacting with large language models in general is that it doesn't know what my knowledge base is as as it starts off. So if I'm trying to troubleshoot a technical problem, doesn't know that I already know a lot about this particular topic, so we can skip over a lot of the steps that I might have already tried. I've tried turning it on and off, for example. I've tried doing this, I've tried doing that, so we can get quicker answers. You mentioned that you have a toddler and that she loves jellyfish. When you ask ChatGPT to help create a birthday card, it suggests the jellyfish. Kindergarten teacher with 25 students, 50 minute lessons are preferred with follow up activities. It remembers this. Okay, yeah. I can see a personalized AI definitely has quite a lot of benefits. I'd love to see how this plays out over time in practice. Okay, they have this thing about turning on memory. Um, you can just go into your settings there go to personalization and then it's in personalization. Okay, so they have a whole new tab for this. That's pretty cool. Okay, it's pretty cool that you can just tell it to forget something or you can actually just go into the settings and delete it yourself. I feel like managing it yourself would be really annoying. So I like that you could just be like, yeah, forget that for me. I don't, I don't want you to remember that I like that. But I would also worry that it's going to just redo that same issue, like automatically recreate a memory that I don't want it to. On default, they use the content that you provide to chat GPT including memories to improve their models. But if you'd like, you can turn this off in data controls. So yeah, if you don't want all your personal data spilling out into the world, not that OpenAI is going to do that, but um, yeah, that's something you might want to consider turning off, honestly. Oh, that's nice. They also have temporary chats without memory, so you can use the classic version right then and there if you just need to rattle something off. That's honestly pretty useful. And so this also kind of rolls off of custom instructions. Sort of feels like it's a, a build off of custom instructions too. But they're saying that custom instructions actually allow for more explicit information or instructions for the model rather than the memories. So they apparently still have their own use that is separate from memories. So with this, they're going to be adding in some different privacy and safety considerations, such as what type of information is allowed to be remembered and how it's used. They want to mitigate bias, steer chat GPT away from proactively remembering sensitive information unless you explicitly ask it to. They also point out how this can be useful for different business scenarios as well. So Memories is also coming to Teams and Enterprise, you know, for coding. It knows which programming language to use, the different frameworks. It can remember your tone of voice for drafting things. You can securely upload business data to ChatGPT and then it can actually make charts off of preferences. So just remembering uh, your actual productivity preferences. Ah, and this is what I was looking for. GPTs will also have memory, so it's their own distinct memory, and builders will have the option to enable or disable it. That's pretty cool. I like that as well, just making it even more customizable. These features, you can see they're starting to compound on each other and really, really benefit the user. And apparently, guys, also, according to an OpenAI team member, this isn't just summaries of previous chats inserted into the context window or system prompt. There's actually a whole separate model here that's trained to enable this experience. A whole separate model trained to remember specific bits and store them away. We don't exactly know how it works because it turns out OpenAI isn't very open with how they do everything. But still, I think this is a really interesting direction for them to go down. This is really exciting. It's very personalized. It definitely feels like the future of AI technology, having your own Jarvis around to remember exactly what you like. And I would love for it to be integrated into my phone, for example, so I just always have 
have this assistant accessible but you know that's a that's a situation that they will have to take up with Apple of course I again can see a lot of concerns like what if someone just hacks into this they could find a lot of sensitive information about you there are security concerns there are risks to this stuff so it's definitely something to keep in mind but the future is definitely headed in this direction for sure and like I said I think Google honestly and a lot of these other big tech corps already know a lot of information that you might not expect anything you put in a Google search is fair game right and if you were wondering if I am one of the blessed people to have this feature the answer would be no I don't have the personalization section yet and in fact it's been around for longer than just today in the past a few people have got access to this feature prior but now it's becoming more of a real thing they're gonna roll this out over time so hopefully I get access soon and as soon as I do get access I will be updating you guys and making uh, a full video covering how it works and my thoughts on it more or less the way I see it though from a market perspective the broader perspective of all the AI technology right now OpenAI is still ahead of the game. Google is still really far behind. They don't have anything like this. They just announced their Gemini Advanced. It's just not at that chat GPT level. There's so much more value going on here for the same exact price. And I'm sure GPT-5 is right around the corner, no? I bet it's going to release this year. Getting used to this technology, uh, adopting it, is definitely going to quote unquote put you ahead and I think it's worth investigating especially if it's something that is exciting and interesting to you but hey you'd probably wouldn't be watching this video if you weren't but I would definitely be curious to see how this could possibly be integrated into hardware like an Android or an iPhone because you kind of want to have it on you at all times especially if it's going to have this advanced memory feature and be your little Jarvis honestly this is everything an Amazon Alexa hopes and wishes it could be I don't know guys let me know what your thoughts are on this is it too creepy is is it too personal or is it exciting to you? I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.